Hello everyone, how's it going? Direct Strike here. Today I will be reviewing Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Now as you all know, or should know, The Phantom Pain is a sequel to Ground Zeroes, which was released which was released last last year around the uh, winter time. game was like only like I think uh, it had a short story mode it got a lot of criticism for that but it had like a few side missions it kind of got you ready for the Phantom Pain they were kind of similar it was an open world uh, I can't remember the name of the locale the world in Ground Zeroes it was some kind of enemy base but moving on to Phantom Pain Phantom Pain is like almost 20 times bigger than uh, Ground Zeroes and I've always been a fan of Metal Gear Solid I played the first Metal Gear Solid when it came out and, uh, I think it was 1998 Yeah. over the years there's been some good Metal Gear Solid games pretty much they all they all have been good pretty much all the ones that were done by Hideo Kojima there's been a few spin-offs, but here and there, some I didn't play. But moving on, the story of Metal Gear Solid 5, Phantom Paint, picks up where uh, Ground Zero is left off. At the end of Ground Zero, there was a big helicopter crash, and uh, kind of like wondering what the hell happened, you know, did Snake, you know, die, and, you know, what happened? You know, the base, the mother base was attacked by this group called Cypher, I think. Or the XOF, led by uh, the lead villain, Skullface. Kind of looks like Freddy, who kind of looks like Freddy Cougar in a way. Hold on, it's... Well, continue on. Like I said, uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 is 20 times bigger than uh, the Ground Zeroes and Ground Zeroes. And it's 100% free roam. When the game starts off, you know, it starts off as like a linear prologue and everything. You know, you're introduced to Snake again and, you know, he's not, he's not 100% in his physical state. You know, he's a little bit crippled, handicapped, so he's got to crawl on the floor a lot. So it's, it pretty much feels like a Call of Duty game. It's very linear, Call of Duty uh, story mode kind of game. It's very linear. Continuing on, and once once the prologue is over, it, now you're you're back at Mother Base. The Mother Base has been destroyed, so you pretty much have to start anew. You start off with one platform. Mother Base is out like out in the middle of uh, uh, the sea somewhere. And you start off with one platform, and you meet up with, uh, you know, Revolver Ocelot. He's, yes, Revolver Ocelot is actually a good guy. Revolver Ocelot is, you know, a well-known villain in the Metal Gear Solid series. And, you know, he's actually helping uh, Big Ball Snake to rebuild uh, Mother Base. So it's pretty it's pretty cool how the game is played. You have to rebuild Mother Base. That's pretty much the big you know the big point of the game. Rebuilding Mother Base. Now I'm gonna break it down. Everything that's good about Metal Gear Solid 5 and everything that's bad So, when you start playing Metal Gear Solid 5, you know, you play the prologue, prologue's over, and now you have to rebuild Mother Base. Snake is uh, with this group called Diamond Dogs now, which are like mercenaries. Snake, Big Balls, is like the leader of this organization. They're kind of like mer mercenaries. And. The whole idea is that you get what a, you do what a mercenary does. You pretty much Big Balls has his own private army, 
and jobs, missions, contracts are offered to Diamond Dogs and you know you either accept or decline some of these missions some of the missions are mandatory some of the missions are optional but you know you get a lot of money from do for doing these missions a lot of these missions have you rescuing soldiers or assassinating you know some people you know sneaking in or or sabotaging facilities and stuff like that. So pretty much uh, the majority of the game is like that. You know, you can pick and choose what mission you want to do. Unlike, you know, past Metal Gear Solid games where, you know, it was just everything was in order. You know, you couldn't choose what you wanted to do. You know, you know this Metal Gear Solid game is more like a free roam game that's you know, it's, you know, inspired by Grand Theft Auto, you know, Saints Row, you know. It was pretty obvious that the, you know, lead creator of the game, Hideo Kojima, you know, wanted to try something different with this Metal Gear Solid. This Metal Gear Solid uh, installment, and... And a lot of times, you know, it does feel like, you know, old games like Mercenaries and you know, Grand Theft Auto. What's good about the game? Well, first off the bat, you know, the graphics in the game are just absolutely gorgeous. Some of the best graphics I've seen in in any game. Like, wow. Like, it's just amazing. Like the character models look so realistic. It's it's crazy. Oh. You know, the wind patterns, you know, the weather effects, you know, the, the the game changes from night and day. You know, it's like, you know, real time, you know, the, the game tells you what time it is, you know. You know. It has a forecast system, it tells you when it's about to rain, it tells you when it's about, you know, it's heavy winds, you know, it's dust storms coming. I mean, that, that shit is just fucking fantastic. You know, it, it's attention to detail and the graphics and the weather effects of the game are just truly amazing. If you're not playing this game in HD, play it in HD. Play it on a big screen TV, you know, no less than, I'd probably say, a 35 inch or 32 inch, no less than that. It, it's just absolutely gorgeous, these graphics. They, they should not be missed. You should at least, you know, if you're not into Metal Gear Solid, you should at least play this game for like a good four hours or five hours just to see some of the, the beautiful stuff that they did with some of the graphics in the game. You know, it's just amazing. So I'm still talking about the good stuff. Later on, I'm going to move to the bad stuff about the game. So another good thing about the game is that there's tons of different weapons you can use in, in the game tons of different weapons. There's rifles, sniper rifles, rocket launchers. There's lots of weapon customization. Everything, you know, it's just, you know, pretty good. Moving on, moving on, I like to talk about the free roam. The free roam aspect of the game is really uh, something else. I mean, there's pretty much two worlds, three worlds that are separate in Metal Gear Solid 5. There's Africa which is open later on and then there's Afghanistan and then there's Mother Base. Mother Base in Afghanistan is almost available right away within like the first hour of the game. Within like the first hour of the game the uh Mother Base and Afghanistan is open right right away. I'm trying to see if there's anything I'm missing here. Like I said, there's a lot of customization. And when you choose these missions, you choose a job, a contract, or something. You pretty much pick any kind of weapon you want, any kind of vehicle you want. Right off in the early part, you're going to probably use the horse. The horse is the only 
It's called the D horse. I guess that D is short for diamond horse. It's, you know, it's diamond dogs and everything. The D horse, you know, it, it's pretty cool. The, uh, the horse mechanic is really good. Uh, it's some of the best horseback riding, you know, I've played in any game. The horseback riding, just, it feels loose. It feels loose. It doesn't feel stiff. It doesn't feel like... It just feels fluid and realistic. I remember another good game that had a good horseback riding uh, mechanic was uh, Assassin's Creed. This game had really good horseback riding. Uh, and a lot of games that didn't have good horseback riding was, you know, Dragon Age. Recent games I played like Dragon Age, Inquisition. It had a very stiff, unrealistic feel to the horseback riding. Yeah, it just... The horse just felt like it was weighed down on anchors, and you know, Witcher 3's horseback riding wasn't too good either. Uh, it could have been better, but in this game, the horse, you know, back riding mechanic is like, wow, you know, Hideo Kojima really paid some attention to detail on some parts. You know, the horseback riding, horseback riding feels real, really realistic and just fluid, and you know, you know, not annoying and, and stiff like most games have. Another good thing about the game is, you know, managing Mother Base. Mother Base is something else to manage. Uh, Mother Base is pretty much, it's like almost like a project, pretty much. You're working from the ground up, pretty much. I played Peace Walker a little bit before I played this game. The reason why I played Peace Walker, because I heard, you know, Mother, the whole Mother Base project, you know, thing, the... the you know, the building the Mother Base, you know, you know, uh, taking care of Mother Base, managing Mother Base, pretty much, was introduced in that uh, PSP, Sony PSP game, uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Back then, I didn't really want to play it that much, but, re you know, recently, before I played this game, I played it, and so when I, you know, played Metal Gear Solid 5, Fan and Pain, I wasn't, you know, you know, this wasn't my first rodeo, rodeo when it came to you know, mother base. You know, I had I had some mother base experience pretty much. Um, you know, in mother base, you pretty much have to you have to choose who you want to one be on your medical team. Medical team pretty much you know heals anybody who's sick. You know, who's been injured, and then you have the intel staff. You know, intel, they gather information, you know, to help you in the world about, you know, where, you know, the resources might be, you know, to help you during the mi during missions and everything. And then you have the combat unit, which is a very important unit. You can choose uh, recruits to join combat, co the combat unit. And then you have the, uh, the most important, I feel, is the R&D uh, uh, team. R&D is short for research and development team and what they do they research a resort sorry they research weapons gadgets stuff that snake can use to help him get a advantage during you know these contract these mercenary missions you do or whether they be side missions mercenary missions or just you know story missions important story missions you know you can make new sniper rifles. This first sniper rifle you might get might not be powerful enough. The range might be garbage. And you you know, you research and develop better sniper rifles, you research and develop say rocket launchers, grenade launchers, stuff like that. You know, it it, it really it, it's something else. It, it's fun to research and develop these things and I had a fun time doing that with Mother Base. The story in Metal Gear uh, Solid 5 is another good thing. The story is really good, I, I think. But it moves kind of slow, but I'll get to that later. Gadgets are really fun in Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, in order to get to recruits from other base, you have to pretty much, you know... Sometimes, you know, people will volunteer, to, you know, to join Mother Base. And sometimes, you know, you could put asleep enemies and you can take your platoon system... Futon system, 
and what this is is it's a recovery system futon recovery system it attaches a uh, balloon to any enemy you want to bring up to mother base and I guess they just willingly you know work for you they might be good at R&D or any other they might have a particular skill that they're good at and I guess in the games theory you know they just want to freely you know just work for you you know the, you the person that you've you know held captive you know and you know, who it's kind of a silly idea in a way but I've played a lot of Metal Gear Solid games and you know the silliness in the game is nothing new to me if this if you're new to Metal Gear Solid and you're gonna find some of the stuff in this game really silly and ridiculous but I've been a long time Metal Gear Solid fan so I'm used to this I know how Hideo you know you know how he makes his games you know it's a lot of he tries to put a lot of comedic relief comedy relief in his games which is cool but a lot if you're new to the series you might think it's stupid but please don't let it you know turn you away Hideo Kojima is just a cool guy he's loose sometimes he doesn't take shit too seriously but you know that's just him so just enjoy the game Like sometimes when you take a balloon and you, you bring somebody up in the air and send them back to mother base, you know he'll 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 laugh and cheer, and and, and stuff, you know. But sometimes this only happens with you know a uh, a prisoner, say like a uh, person that you're rescuing. But I'm going on too much about this. Let me go on. Um, another thing I like about this game is that the stealth is hard. It's way stricter than any Metal Gear Solid game I've played. The, I thought the the stealth was strict in Metal Gear Solid 4, but in this game it, it's really strict. I like how the stealth works. When I first started playing this game, I got really angry of how realistic the stealth was and how far they can hear you and see you and how easily you can get spotted. But later on, I really started to like the stealth. It actually forced me to become better at how I move throughout missions and how I use stealth and it actually made me a, a way better stealth player I think so I like how the stealth is more realistic you know Metal Gear Solid games always got a lot of flack for you know the stealth mechanic being too easy you know I remember when the first one just first one came out you know, in the 90s People were talking about, oh, this stealth is too easy. Yeah, you know, it's not like Thief. It's not like Splinter Cell. You know, it. But it seems like in a way, this game we've come full circle now. You know, it's like now, Metal Gear Solid Five has that stealth gameplay that I think a lot of hardcore stealth players will want to get into because it, it, it's really strict and. But in a way, you know, it's kind of you know. It's not too hard, you know. If you just, you know, you can't. If you step on a leaf a wrong way, you know, you'll get spotted. But so you gotta watch your footsteps. A lot of time you have to crawl. A lot of time you, have, I crawl, I crawl, I crawl. Use my tranquilizer dart. Try to take out as many enemies as possible. And you know, I move on. I'm moving on now. Another thing, um, let's see, I'd like to mention, so I talked about the free roam, talked about how the gadgets are fun and everything. So now I, I'll probably be, be moving on to the bad, the bad thing about uh, with the Metal Gear Solid Five, Phantom Pain. And the one thing I, you know, do not like was, um, you can only carry two guns. In any Metal Gear Solid we've played, you know, I, you know, you can always carry more than one gun. I mean, more than two guns. But in this game, you can only carry two, two guns, and a lot of times it just doesn't make any sense. Now, what they've done in this game, whenever you need a new weapon, say like you're in the middle of the mission and you need a new weapon, you can call in an airdrop, and what they'll do, they'll send in a crate attached to a balloon, and it'll drop a weapon. You pick up that weapon, the weapon that you had in your hand disappears. 
Now, the, I, you know, this caused a lot of problems on, on harder missions because a lot of times I was, uh, you know, in the middle of using like a sniper rifle and then a helicopter would show up and I would have to uh, destroy this helicopter. I can't do it with a sniper rifle because for some reason a sniper rifle, the, the uh, doesn't really do much damage to a helicopter's uh, window. You can't shoot the pilot, which I thought would have been cool if you could shoot the pilot, but you can't. I kind of thought that would have been a cool achievement, you know, shoot the pilot and you know destroy the helicopter. But they, you know, you can't shoot through the window of the uh, helicopter. And another thing, they only give one suppressor during. During um, the mission, Snake can't for some reason. You know, Snake cannot carry more than one suppressor. And suppressors, you really need your suppressors for your tranquilizer gun and your, you know, machine gun, whatever you need it. But you know, whenever they wear out, you have to call an airdrop, wait about two minutes, and. Uh, and then boom, you got it. Now you got a new suppressor. They've just refilled your inventory. And yeah, pretty much. Another thing um, I didn't like about the game was, you know, the health regen system. Metal Gear Solid really never really had health regen system for some reason in this game they decided to go with a health regeneration system you know you take cover behind a wall and you rebuild health I kinda would have liked it if you just used rations and you call in you know a ration drop and got new rations but you know rations have disappeared from Metal Gear Solid completely in this game and rations were always like a big part in the Metal Gear Solid games but they're gone now Another thing I do not like is that the enemies wake up way too damn quick from a tranquilizer dart to the head. Now, you're using a tranquilizer dart. And, uh, the, the game kind of contradicts itself a lot of times. It wants to be realistic, but then at the same time, it, it's unrealistic and phony. When I, you know, for example, it's like you can only carry two weapons. Okay, it wants to be realistic. You know, a lot of people complain about, you know, the game's being the game being unrealistic and you know the older Metal Gear Solid games being unrealistic and you know Snake carrying around you know 500 guns at one time and he just pulls them out of his ass oh you know he wants a rocket launcher oh he just pulls it out of his ass now he wants a uh, you know AK-47 pulls it out of his ass you know now he wants a uh, grenade launcher pulls it out of his ass it's almost like you know some kind of you know invisible box he's carrying around so the game wants to be you know, unre you know, the game wants to be realistic in Metal Gear Solid 5, and at the same time, it's unrealistic. For example, the tranquilizer darts. You shoot some guy with tranquilizer darts, he'll fall asleep, and say if he gets found out, he gets seen by one of his buddies, his uh, comrades, and, you know, they'll wake him up, and he'll wake up in like 10 seconds, and it's almost like nothing happened. Like, dude, you've just been shot in the head with a tranquilizer dart. Okay? That's supposed to put you out for hours, okay? These things are built to bring down wild animals. And I, I just shot, like, a guy that weighs no more than 180 pounds with trigger a dart. And you know, he wakes up, you know, like, you know, gets, woke, gets awoken by his friend like nothing happened, okay? Another thing, it's like, it, you know, another good thing about Metal Gear Solid, uh, like I said, I think I mentioned you can use your own vehicles, you can choose your vehicles, you could, you know, steal vehicles and send them to Mother Base, anything can be sent to Mother Base, jeeps, trucks, anything, and you can use these during missions, but, you know, why can't I store weapons in my jeep, in my truck, wouldn't that make sense, they did not, you know, instead of me having a Call an airdrop for a ro rocket launcher, destroy a helicopter. You know, I could just put my rocket launcher inside the Jeep or truck, come back and get it. But no, the game was, doesn't let me do that for some reason. <clears throat> but, you know, that's that. 
Another bad thing about Metal Gear Solid uh, 5 is that the boss battles are scarce. Not a lot of boss battles in this game. Kind of wondered why. There was like only two good boss battles. Now, spoiler alert. You're going to fight some big robots in this game. But, you know, there, uh, another bad thing about this game is there was only two chapters. The first chapter was pretty good. The second chapter was kind of, you know, sluggish. And, and what I heard is that, you know, the game almost like stopped development during chapter two. Like, the reason why Chapter 2 was not really as good as Chapter 1 is because uh, the development was rushed. Hideo Kojima was being, you know, rushed to finish the game by Konami. So, in a way, we really don't have Kojima, the developers of the game, to blame. We have Konami to blame because they put a gun to his head and made him rush through the fucking game. You know, Chapter 2 could have been way better. They could have been Chapter 3. And what I'm hearing in the news is that this game is incomplete. Uh, there were supposed to be, you know, pivotal story moments in this game. Like, what the hell happened with Cypher? Like, we took down Skullface, but we did not eliminate Cypher. Cypher was like the big organization where all the Skullface, I mean, all the Skull, the, you know, the groups, you know, the bad guys, the Cyber Mutants, Skull, you know, the, called the Skulls came from, you know. We were going to find the source of all of this stuff. Like the man on fire. All of this. Um, a man on fire was an... You know, that was another good boss battle too. I forgot to mention that. But, you know, the boss battles are very few and far between. But, like I said, the game just feels incomplete. And it feels like Chapter 2 could have been a lot better. But what I'm hearing, that it was just, you know, incomplete. Yeah, it was rushed. And Kojima just did what he could do. And that's, that's very, you know, sad that this might be the last Metal Gear Solid game. That this might be the last Metal Gear Solid game. And damn, it's incomplete. Like, what are we going to do about this, you know? Konami doesn't give a damn. Pretty much. They just wanted that, that, that money. I think uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 could have been perfect, damn near, if, you know, they would have fine-tuned a couple of things and everything here and there, and it, it would have been like a Chapter 3 or Chapter 2 would have been, you know, way better than Chapter 1, but it's so weird that Chapter 1, you know, was better than Chapter 2. But that's just the thing, you know. It's going to be a long pause here. I'm trying to figure out what to talk about. But in my conclusion, Metal Gear Solid 5 is a great game. Beautiful graphics. Good, cool gameplay. Good gameplay. The stealth is, you know... It's something else. If you like stealth, you're going to love this game. Nice stealth mechanic. Mother Base is fun to build up. It's a cool project. It's cool to check out all the weapons. It's fun to check out all the weapons. The free roam aspect is really good. Not really much to do in the free roam, but... still pretty fun and uh, I'm gonna have to give this game a 8.7 out of 10 because I just don't feel that it was really complete it felt like it was missing something in, in a later chapter of the game you know what game only has two chapters you know it should have been like three chapters or something but uh you know, the, the plot, the ending of the plot, the ending of the story was, I thought, was gripping. It was interesting. Here's a spoiler. Spoiler! I didn't really like how you, how you had to play, replay the whole first mission. 
of the game at the end of the game I thought that was weird and just like what the hell is this I just thought that was weird you know but like I said this game just feels incomplete and it could have been way better if it would just given more time and uh Could have, been, could have been way better if it was just given more time to be done. But 8.7 out of 10. Great graphics. Mother base. You know, playing around with mother base is pretty fun. Uh, actually, you know, had a water gun. I was just going around shooting people with my water gun and mother, mother base and everything. But, you know, you know, here I'm just talking about, you know, Ogre Solid 5. And it's decent. If you're a fan of the Metal Gear Solid series, it's a must play. You got to play this. There's interesting boss battles here and there. Uh, I was being a little critical about the boss battles. Here was a sniper boss battle, the middle of the middle of the fire boss battle. Um, then there's a big robot boss battle. All that in chapter one. Like not one boss battle in chapter two. Don't know why, but like I said, it, it just seems like chapter two is incomplete because they actually have you doing. Yeah, you know, redoing missions if you want to redo, you know, the missions. Yeah, you know, they're just modified and you know, made ho harder. I did a couple of them, but you know, I got frustrated because my skills aren't, my patience are is very short. You know, I didn't want to be, you know, playing a mission with no guns or or anything. But um, yeah. Pick this game up if you're a fan. If you're not a fan of the series, tread lightly. Don't be so judgmental. Heat this review. Remember what I said in this review. It's you know it's gonna be silly, but hell, hell, you might like it. This game might you know get you interested in playing maybe the older Metal Gear Solid games if you never played them. But I say the graphics are gorgeous. The gameplay is really nice. You know, the mechanics, the shooting mechanics are really good. The stealth mechanics are good. Pick this game up, whether you're a fan or not a fan. Pick it up. It's fun. You have a blast. I'm gonna give this, you know, game an 8.7. Almost great. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Hideo Kojima, son. For you know, a good game, I know you could not complete this because you know your bullshit employers. But thank you for at least trying, putting up a good effort. Because a lot of developers don't. And thank you. Eight point seven. Great game. I'm out.